Happy Mindful Monday, Conscious Leaders. I hope you had a great weekend and you feel fueled and ready for the week ahead. Um, this week, I'm excited to go over limiting beliefs with you. And limiting beliefs are beliefs that we have about the world, about society, about certain people, about the ways in which things should operate, even in general, about life in general, really, that actually are hindering our success in certain areas, that are actually holding us back from experiencing great success in our lives. And so limiting beliefs can come from a lot of different things. They can come from society, they can come from our parents, they can come from our peers, our teachers. And we hold on to these and they become true to us. Not with a capital T on a universal level, more so to our own truth. And like I said, is that unless we become aware, unless we become really conscious of these beliefs and start to get curious about them, we may actually continue on automatic pilot and ultimately getting the same results, which we're not really wanting anymore or are not necessarily serving us anymore. And so what we have the opportunity to do is we have an opportunity to first ask ourselves is, what do I believe about? And that could be if you recognize that you're getting stuck in a certain area of your life and, um, or if you just wanna get curious about certain things. So that could be, what do I believe about money? What do I believe about relationships? What do I believe about success? What do I believe about my career? And so oftentimes when we look at those, we'll see our certain, our values weaved in those. So in that curiosity, we get to also see that maybe some of those beliefs aren't mine. So for example, let's say, what do I believe about money? And if some of your um, beliefs are that money doesn't grow on trees and easy, it's hard, money's hard to come by, is that now this belief actually is hindering you from experiencing manifesting money in your life. And so it might become more of a struggle and a, and a suffering. And so then we want to ask ourselves the next question is where did that belief come from? And then we get to see, well, actually, maybe that was my, that was my parent, that was my parents' belief. And that's actually not my belief anymore. And I'm seeing actually life show up differently where I'm experiencing success to a certain level. And maybe if I let that belief go, I can experience greater success. And so an example of that would be when I was younger, my mom had this belief. We grew up in a very Jewish town and we're not Jewish. And she had a belief in which she would speak to frequently and say, Jewish people are stingy. And I remember hearing this. And then over time, I started to question that because two of my best friends were actually Jewish and they were the most giving people that I have ever met in my life. And so I made a decision. I was actually like, you know what, that's not true. And um, I didn't consciously do that in the sense that I recognized, well, this is a limiting belief, right? I just recognized that that actually wasn't my experience. That wasn't my truth. So I decided to change that. And so what we get to do from that point is, and maybe sometimes you won't even know actually where the belief came from, but it's, it's worth at least, you know, spending a little inquiry on that. And so the next question would be, um, or the next step would be, um, is really asking ourselves, does that belief actually serve who I am now and actually where I'm choosing to go? And so we have an opportunity to see that. So let's say, for example, that around relationships is that there is a belief that you have and maybe it's a societal belief or you, something you learn in what, witnessing your parents that over time relationships just kind of get flat. You know, intimacy kind of just is lost and, and, and that's kind of what happens and you just argue a lot, you make it more about the kids, but that's what happens and that's just, that's the way it is. Well, that's ultimately a limiting belief because it holds us back from experiencing something else where we also know that in the world, or maybe we don't know, but we have an opportunity to, to, to start looking out for it, is that people actually that do experience thriving relationships, even that have been married for 15, 20 years. So it's that question of going, wait, hold on a second. If I, if I actually want to experience more intimacy and I want to experience a greater relationship, then, then how does that belief actually serve me now and where I want to go? And so then the next step would be, well, what would I rather believe? And so we get to put in a different belief and create that and now make that our new. So we first ask ourselves, what do I believe about? Next thing is, where did that belief come? Again, you may not know. It's worth investigating. And then the next one would be, does that belief actually serve who I am now and where I'm choosing to go? And then the next question is, well, what, do I, what would I rather believe? 
So give it a shot. I, I invite you this week to really spend some personal inquiry and putting your, your focus and attention on certain beliefs that you have and start to get really curious and maybe even go through these four questions to see if, if they actually are serving you or actually getting in your way. Feel free to use your accountability partner for this as well as check in with me, of course. Shoot me emails and be like, oh my gosh, I realize I have this belief around and I'm recognizing that's not true at all, but I'm having problems really shifting that. I want you to talk to me about that kind of stuff. Again, values, beliefs, huge, and we're driven by them. So give it a shot, see what happens, and have a most fantastic week.